Mm, I don't know about you, but every time I hear that sick tune, it gets my blood boiling, gets me going. Hello and welcome to Game On right here on News Central Television. My name is Baba Tunde Koiki. We thank you again for joining us as we travel the world of sports from Nigeria, Africa and beyond, bring you the latest sporting news from across the globe. Once again, thank you for joining us. Uh, don't forget, we're streaming live on YouTube, and you can also join the conversation using our social media handles. And very soon, we will make available our phone lines so that you can join in live and tell us what you're thinking regarding sports any, anywhere in the world. And speaking of sports anywhere in the world, everybody's waiting for that super fight that is coming up tomorrow in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, as uh, Anthony Joshua goes head to head with the predator himself, Francis Ngannou. It's Nigeria versus Cameroon again. Uh, all I know is that somebody's going to hit the canvas. But these two gentlemen with me might not agree uh, regarding the possible outcome. But Okpa Adebari, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure having you on the show. Definitely. Always good to be here. Are you looking forward to Nganu Joshua as well? Definitely. It's going to be a big fight. Two heavyweights. We already know Nganu is slightly heavier than Joshua currently. Yeah. And then when you take a look at it, um, Nganu is used to the MMA background. And then he's not really much of a boxer. But he did give Fury a good fight. And then if Joshua wins against Nganu, we then have that ultimate super heavyweight bout between Fury and Joshua. So it's one to look forward to, well, definitely. Well, Fury has to navigate the threat posed by <laughs> uh, Alexander Yusik, can we? But oh, yeah. I mean, talking about Ngannou, sticking with Ngannou, he, he hasn't looked flustered at all. He's enjoying the limelight. He's oh, inspiring, yeah. verbal spy. He's, his trash talk has definitely gotten better anyway. Yeah, and I think that um, the, the build-up to the fight has been a bit civil. Maybe they stepped Very it up soon. a bit today. Mm. But have you guys noticed that it's looking like Joshua? You're looking like Ngan. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. That is not true. After the Joshua wins, according to what we heard, 123 kilos. Oh, uh, yeah. 114 kilos. I don't weigh anything. But I was surprised that Ngan weighed in two stones, you know, heavier than. Than, than yeah, like almost 10 kilos, like nine kilos heavier. Yeah. yeah and um, he's I'm, a big man. Oh, he's a big man, actually. And. Um, he comes in here with confidence. I, mean, I was listening to him today, and he was filled with confidence. And I mean, his confidence coming from his previous fight against Fury. You know? mm. And um, I thought he acquitted himself really well, took him the distance, 10 rounds. And um, even in some quarters, they felt they didn't lose that fight. And yeah. you remember that viral moment where he floored Fury in the third yeah. round or so? Yeah. And I mean, Joshua has to be very careful here. Last time I was here, I talked about the fact that this is a legacy fight for him mm. because he loses this one. Everything goes on blot. the It's a mm. blot on True. his. On his record for him. About this, I mean, look, I mean, look on your screen. Two phenomenal looking athletes. I mean, men, men can, black men don't come looking any better. Like yeah. two bronze demigods are ready to go to war tomorrow. We're talking about that uh, later on, on the show. But let's uh, start very quickly with the African Games going down uh, in Accra, Ghana. The Games will officially start tomorrow, although some sporting events have already taken off. Uh, but ahead of the start of the Games, uh, it's a uh, kind of traditional to visit, uh, you know, key personalities in the country, maybe the king and queen, and the uh, organizers of the Africa Games have made it a point of duty to take the official Games torch all the way to Kumasi to visit the Asante Hene, uh, the paramount ruler, the king of the Ashanti people as well in Kumasi. So I think this was really, really good, uh, Wale. It's, it's the kind of thing that we like to see, you yeah. know, putting in culture and tradition into sporting events, giving the royal blessings, you know. So it's uh, kind of you, you know, when you're in Rome, you, you act like the Romans, mm -hmm. and um, that's what they've done in there um, with the Asante Hene. And um, I think it coincided also with um, the Independence Day celebration, you know, yeah. I think it was yesterday. Um, they marked their Independence Day. But I like when you have a, a blend of tradition and sports. It always goes together. Mm. And Ghana have shown that. Yeah. Well, um, okay, I don't know about you, but I always like it when... Uh, a country always makes it a point of duty to showcase their culture, their tradition in any sporting event. It's like going to uh, probably, I mean, London hosting the Olympic Games. You saw the Queen was definitely involved in that. Uh, the late Queen, I beg your pardon. Um, I mean, it, would be, it wouldn't be out of place to see a, a paramount ruler, the kind of... Uh, it's like coming to Nigeria. Well, now, this Nigeria hosting the, Africa, the African Games without uh, probably visiting the Oni of Ife sure. or the Emir of Kano, the mm -hmm. Sultan of Sokoto... Uh, and the Onisha of Onisha, those kind of those kind of major major figures, it kind of puts a different gloss on, on the competition, doesn't it? Definitely, it does. And then, from a political standpoint, when you take a look at it, hosting events like this brings tourism into the country. So mm. definitely, they would also want to showcase their history, which we you know is very very rich. Um, 
obviously coming from the the pre-colonial times, gaining independence. Ghana has rich um, history, and rich we, would be history. Love to, we would love to see that fully on display during the African Games. Yeah. Yeah. And speak of culture and tradition, too. I mean, the opening ceremony, we'd like to see what Nigeria comes to the table oh, yeah. with. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we always have that. That would be very... That would be very, very, very I mean, at the AFCON, we saw our, our boys, the, the Super Eagles with... Yeah, looking really good on traditional the time. Mm. So with the African Games tomorrow opening ceremony, yeah, I'd like to see what Team Nigeria will definitely. Maybe it's an Ankara, maybe it's, uh, you know, Iran, Buba, or whatever. Just, or just the rest I showed it to me. Either <laughs> white or green or green and white. That, definitely. That's sure. definitely. Uh, moving on uh, with the, the show now, let's uh, tell you that uh, there's plenty going on in Kenya right now because uh, the high court in that country has ordered Athletics Kenya officials to vacate office and hold fresh elections within 90 days. This has been a long-running battle uh, in Athletics Kenya. We hear that some people have stayed in office for too long. They've not wanted to vacate the office. Uh, it's been a major, major cause of concern. Remember just a few days ago, it also, uh, I think it also bubbled to the surface when Kenyan athletes protested about uh, the uh, uh, parameters set for qualification for the mm -hmm. African Games. I mean, these kind of chaotic situations are not particularly the best going into a major competition, and it always seems to stem from administration. Definitely. Way too many distractions are not good for the athletes. The athletes want to focus on what goes on either on track and field, but also the athletes want an enabling environment. They want to feel that support, especially from the officials. And then, you know, it's, it's, um, when, I, when I think about it currently, funny enough, a couple of weeks ago, just before the Access Bank Marathon, we did see the head of their um, athletic um, committee. You actually interviewed him, actually. Exactly. Mm. He was there. And then, um, I don't know if I should say this, but when I did see him, he looked a bit, you know, for someone in that capacity, he looked like someone who was very, very relaxed. He had a good entourage with him. So you might not, you probably, if you see him, you might say maybe that's not someone that's maybe on his toes. But for someone who's a veteran in the business, you would think that he has all parameters covered. But mm. now, just a couple of days before the African Games, we hear this coming out. So it's a bit of a worry, not just for Kenya alone, but I think also a bit of a worry for the other African federations. Mm. Wally, in terms of the Africa Games, yeah. Kenya sits sixth on the all-time table, over 100 gold medals won. And we're talking about global athletics. You cannot but mention Kenyan athletics, the incredible feats that they have achieved over the years, be it at the mm -hmm. Olympic Games, the Commonwealth Games, the African Games. But you always get the impression that just like Nigeria, they can do better if they put square pegs in square holes, yes. do the, the, the needful, especially when it comes to administration, that they could be much more. Oh, yeah, I agree with you. And, I mean, the reason why Kenya have been really successful um, in, in global sports, especially in athletics, hasn't been because of administration. It's been because of the talent that, that they've got. And we know the edge they always have um, when it comes to the long-distance um, races. I think that a couple of times, we've also seen them in short distance in the sprints as well, but administrative-wise, they've, they've been in the doldrums for years. Mm. I mean, this is just coming to light, but over the years, administratively, Kenya Athletics has been a mess. Yeah, uh, they've been, yeah. they've been they, I mean, the Athletics Integrity Union yeah. has pulled up Kenya multiple times they've had doping for doping issues, infra right? infractions yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah. So, so this is just coming to light, but they've always covered for it with the natural talent they've got and who have always been successful. And you like it or not, in the long term, it's always going to catch up with you, and that's why... You can also see a couple of Kenyans now naturalizing to other countries. Yeah. Um, they, are, they, are, they are doing it for Holland, doing it for other Europeans because... Middle they, Eastern countries yeah, as well. Yeah, because there's a feeling that administrative-wise, you know, Kenya is not measuring up. So um, they have to sit up and, um, you know, figure out because they are also gradually losing the grip. Um, Kip Tom unfortunately passed on. Yeah. This was supposed to be their poster boy, you know, for athletics well, for, for the at next least few, the next few years. Least, yeah. He was supposed to be the big guy for the Paris Olympics. Now he's passed on, unfortunately. They have to start looking at the next one. Right now, I'm not sure Kenya is in a good place. Well, well, we'll talk about uh, Kenyan athletics uh, much more as the show continues to progress. But uh, joining us now, all the way from Nairobi, Kenya, um, well, well, she'll be joining us uh, pretty soon is Lin Wachira. She's a sports journalist and an athletics expert as, as, uh, as regards Kenyan athletics. She'll be joining us pretty soon. Uh, but let's uh, move on and uh, talk about the, uh, all Africa, the African Games, I beg your pardon, as it's currently uh, happening in Accra. We, we did say that the, uh, the, uh, the competition itself starts officially tomorrow, but action has already uh, continued. We can tell you that Nigeria's women's table tennis team is in the finals of the women's table tennis team event, while the men are currently battling it out with Tunisia for the, in the semi-final for the right uh, to qualify for the final. But earlier today, uh, there was action in, in the karate uh, in the, um, in the karate event, and we can tell you that Elizabeth Ogede 
uh, Ogene Wogaga. Yes, Ogene Wogaga. Uh, well, she lost uh, in her bid to win a bronze medal uh, as Team Nigeria also lost to South Africa in the bronze medal match in the, in the Team Mail Qatar as well. Uh, not exactly what we expected to see up there, but you do get the impression that it was kind of expected. Definitely. Going into the African Games, um, the good thing was that, I mean, this is bittersweet, if I'm being honest. A lot of the Federation presidents did come out to say, look, um, going into these games, we know, the, we know the specific African countries that are going to be dominant. And they were not wrong. It's, it's, it's playing out currently, especially in table tennis as well, as the Egyptians are dominating. Mm. Um, the, few, the, the few departments, or should I say, the few federations who are confident going into the African Games, you know, first of all, you know, football, both the men and the women's, and also with weightlifting as well. So these are the few ones where we, we seem to have confidence. But nevertheless, it's a, it's a competition. Wrestling, wrestling as well, yeah, wrestling as well, and boxing. But nevertheless, it's a, it's a competition. And then going into the competition, you're meant to have strategy to win. I don't expect us to go for the games without um, the aim, especially the athletes, without aiming to win. Mm. So sometimes you, you might want to question the desire of the athletes. But then again, I think the quality is clear to see. When you don't compete regularly with the best of the best, it's difficult for you to go to battle with them once in a while. Mm. And that's one of the reasons why we'll be talking to our guests all the way from Kenya now. Uh, she, she, amongst uh, quite a few people, are, are wondering that regarding the future of the African Games, does it really have a place in the scheme of things? We heard that there might be a rival competition set up uh, uh, to uh, probably give pride of place to multi-sports events uh, in terms of, especially uh, in an Olympic qualifying year. Lynn Wachira joins us from Nairobi, Kenya uh, tonight on Game On. Thank you so much for joining us, Lynn. We've been waiting for you for having me. I didn't think you you wanted me this early in the show, so I'll you know, let me buy some time and then I'm going to join in, you know, like fashionably late, but really thank you so much for having me. I know I know people say we saved the best for last, but to be honest, we just couldn't wait to have you, so we decided to bring you in as early as possible. But Lynn, let's quickly start with uh, Kenyan Athletics now. A lot of drama early in the week uh, where athletes protested uh, regarding the parameters that were set for qualification for the Games. They said only the first place finishers in the uh, individual events would qualify. Where did that come from? Is it a question of maybe the Federation not having enough money to take as many athletes as they would want? Or maybe it was just trying to fine tune it to make sure that only the best would qualify? First of all, what happened uh, two days ago is one of the things that we hoped for, prayed for, and we hoped that we would you know, witness in our lifetime, you know, where Kenyan athletes get to stand up and speak up uh, for themselves. Uh, so first of all, that was a win, you know, regardless of the background, that was absolutely a win because Kenyan athletes have for a very long time uh, been used to, you know, just being suppressed and just doing as they say. Um, so that was, a monumental time, but um, what happened was the background of the protest was um, the federation. So athletes came, go to the stadium, and you know Kenya is not short of stars. If you say let's go for a national trials, you know you're going to have tens of athletes, even hundreds uh, of athletes sometimes. So athletes got onto the track and they got to learn that only um, one athlete across each discipline, you know was going to go to the African Games. For Kenya, that's literally ridiculous. You know, like how do you just take one athlete, uh, one athlete across, okay, probably across the 100 meters, 200 meters, you know, it's okay, that one, you know, that could happen, but 1,500 meters. 800 300 meters, meters people chase, 2,000 meters. Mm. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. So athletes thought it, it didn't make sense for them to take part in an event where only one athlete was going to go to the Games. And the reason um, the number of athletes was 30 uh, was because, you know, like a lot of countries, if we're being honest, are not putting so much weight onto the African Games. Uh, looking at the, fact that, at the fact that this is an Olympic year, uh, the African Games ought to have happened last year to serve as an Olympic qualifier. So a lot of countries are literally thinking and prioritizing, um, you know, like the Olympic Games and other qualifiers. And remember, the African Games are not qualifiers for most of the qualifiers. Uh, they are not a qualifier for most of the events. So, hmm. yeah, it was a question of how much money 
does the government want to spend on the African Games? And then how do we ensure that the money that is available is shared across all the disciplines? So all the disciplines that were interested in going to the African Games were asked to cut down their numbers. So that was the background of that protest. Mm. And guess what? It was a win for athletics because oh, so. at the end of the day, 60, uh, 53 um, athletes, down, uh, you know, up from 30 athletes, will be representing Kenya at the African Games. So really a win for the athletes and for athletics. Okay, so uh, Lynn, if I get you correctly now, uh, 53 athletes will be representing uh, Kenya in athletics. Will these 53 be some of the cream of uh, Kenyan athletics, uh, like the likes of Mary Mora and, and others? Uh, I mean, of course, uh, you do know that you do have some stars in, in the middle distances as well, and of course in the field events. Will these be some of the key athletes that Kenya will, will uh, present? First of all, let's be honest. I mean, it's when you say the cream the la cream of Kenyan athletes. I mean, if if you if you take what you would call the cream and send them, you know, and put them aside and get the B athletes who follow the cream and get the C athletes, you know, there would still be stars at the African Games. Um, you know, seriously though, um, we do have um, some stars that are gonna be at the African Games. Uh, for example, you said it, you called it. We have Mary Morat, the reigning 800 meters um, world champion, mm. would be coming or will be going to Ghana. She will, however, be stepping down the distance. Uh, she's not looking at um, at a medal at the African Games in the 800 meters race, but rather, uh, you know, she's working on her speed ahead of the, you know, Olympic the start Games. of the Diamond mm. League. But she's an amazing 400 meters runner. Actually, um, have like that's how we got to get introduced to Mary Mora at the World Under 18, um, you know, that, uh, that Kenya hosted. She was a 400 meters runner who converted to an 800 meters runner. We also have the world record holder in the 3,000 meters temperature, Beatrice Chokoech, uh, who is also going to be coming to the game fresh from winning a, a bronze medal um, at the World Indoor in the 3,000 meters. We have, um, we have Julius Diego as well, um, you know, five-time African champion. In the men's juggling, yes, yes. Um, world champion, you know, 2016 Olympic silver medalist. So you still have some good names in there. You're obviously going to have, uh, you know, surprises also, you know, like um, in the team. So it's a good mix of, um, you know, young, experienced. Yeah, I, I would say quite a nice blend. Mm, okay. Well, um, now, now, Lynn, um, it's been a very interesting week for um, Kenyan athletics I want us. I want you to talk us through um, the decision of the High Court in Kenya to uh, that has ordered um, some of the Kenyan athletics officials to vacate the offices. Uh, can you talk us through that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there has been an ongoing um, case in court um, that dates back eight years ago. Um, you know, one of the former athletes, um, you know, a former uh, Boston Marathon champion, you know, Moses, Moses Tanui, uh, took Athletics Kenya to court, um, you know, demanding a change in the constitution and just how, you know, the office was running and all that. And the case, for some weird reasons, for some strange reasons um, that I wouldn't want to spe speculate, um, has really dragged on, has been there like, you know, day in, week in, a month, a year, years, and a whole eight years. So it means the current office has been in office comfortably with no election in sight. Like, they've literally just been there. So the case was ruled today where um, the officials are meant to vacate office and conduct fresh elections in in, in, you know, in about uh, three months, um, in, a, in 90 days, which is interesting because that would mean that Kenya would need to have a new office before the Olympic Games. And remember, um, athletics is the top, top, it's the cream federation for Kenya. All its medalists, um, you know, gold medalists, um, apart from one, actually, um, you know, come from athletics. Uh, that's one of the sports, or rather almost solely the sport that Kenya Kenya, Kenya will medal um, on at the Olympics. So ah, it's mamas, it's mamas here and there, you know, what is going to happen after today. But there are speculations that, um, you know, obviously the athletic Kenya, that is the Yeah, they most likely body, appeal. Mm. You know, yeah, uh, we saw, we saw, uh, we saw um, the assistant treasurer of the federation early on hint at, um, you know, at um, at an appeal as 
quickly as tomorrow. Um, so we're waiting and following to see what will happen. But, but for now, they have been ordered to conduct, to conduct fresh elections. Okay, let's uh, leave the boring political administrative part. I think, I think Okpa, you have a question as well? I'm sure you guys yes. can relate. I'm sure you can relate. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. That's not, it happens all across Africa. We have federations, all of them falling over themselves. They can't do things right. It affects the athletes. It affects the sport. So nobody's really happy because we'd expect that, I mean, countries like Kenya, who are paragons of athletes, Athletics, world leaders in athletics to be leading the way forward for the rest of the continent. But it is what it is. Okay, I mean, you have a question? Yeah. The, the, truth is, the truth is, Kenya is a very blessed country. We are organically just somehow produce talent. You know, like you have athletes who are so good. And remember, one of the other things that's very um, that's very unique about um, track and field is that it's an individual sport. And remember, as much as federations do play a role, it's not as huge because you have management companies who are um, like, you know, very huge stakeholders in, in athletics. You, have, you know, you have the managers, you have the, uh, you know, the, the athletes themselves who are going to have individual coaches and most federations. And I'm sure you'll agree with me, um, even in, you know, Nigeria or like wherever. Mm. Most federations are there only to facilitate the athletes around when they don the national colors like you know um, they are the connection between the athletes and world athletics but apart from that you know nothing much so nothing. that's why it's very possible to have like not excellent governance in athletics but still have athletes from a certain country performing mm. well i, I get that i get that Lynn. yeah Let, let's just leave that aside okay, you have an interesting question i think Yes, I do. Lynn, thank you for the clarification regarding that. But then again, could you please give us more insights regarding the future of the African Games and their competitor, the Anok Games, as well? Well, that's, it's, it's a very interesting um, conversation to have, but more so um, one that I'm, I'm excited um, to see what the future of African Games look like. Uh, because as, as, as it stands, the, the African Games are... <sighs> Has it outlived its usefulness? Is that what you want to say? Like, like I have, I have no words because how are we having the African Games in an Olympic year? Like a hundred and forty days to the Olympic Games, we are having the African Games that are generally supposed to serve as a qualifier for the Olympic Games, guys. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. We should have had the African Games last year, and remember they were postponed twice last year, then we're having them this year, and going to the competition, even as, 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 as soon as two weeks ago, three weeks ago, there were still sports that were confused about whether their sport is a qualifier at the, you know, at the, at the African Games or not. And that is how you ended up having like only a few people, you know, like a few people going or a few people choosing to go to the African Games because if you're qualified, you know, what's the point? And if you're not qualified, but it's not a qualifier, then it makes no sense. I mean, look at hockey. Hockey, the African Federation had to speak to their IF to be able to organize a competition on the side that was a qualifier. Mm -hmm. That happened last year. So for most hockey teams, it makes absolutely no sense to go to the African Games. But anyway, last year in in was it in November in early December, um, the Association of National Olympics of Africa um, Secretary General uh, they had a, a, a gathering, so the 40th um, edition of the SG's um, gathering, and um, Anoka's SG um, did make um, an announcement that they had registered. Not that they were going to register, but they had registered um, Anoka Games, which are technically going to be Olympic qualifiers, and they're going to be held ahead of, um, you know, they're going to be held in 20, the first Anoka Games will be held um, in 20, 2027. Yeah, in 2027. Um, so they're going to be Olympic qualifiers. And obviously, you guys, you know, that doesn't, it's, it's not going to fit well with the African Union, who mm. are literally the owners of the games but there's something fundamentally wrong with the african union being owners of games that olympic qualifiers when you think about it you know mm. um, so, so Lynn, that's really my question to you so has it is it that the Africa games has outlived its usefulness that it's no longer relevant 
I think um, the African games in how they were started, they needed to evolve. And at some point, the African Union needed to let the games go to people who are, you know, technically able and people who understand the to rules, it, who yeah. have the direct, uh, you know, direct um, communication and leads to the IOC. Um, having, having the African Games as they are now, to be honest, makes no sense. Look at all the continents. They all started the Games partly for the same reasons. You know, let's get together for Africa. It was, you know, let's let's get together, you know, let's, you know, let's let's just get to know each other. Let's hang out with each other as, as Africans. And then, you know, they evolved to what they are now. And for a very long time there was, you know, there was there was like, you know, like pulling here and there between Anoka and AU. But then before the last games in Morocco, there was an agreement where AU decided to give Anoka right to like just take care of the technicalities and then they were just going to be owners of the games. But then coming into the Ghana games, um, I, I don't, I, I'm not sure if I should use this word, <laughs> but there was you're, a breach. You're on there, there so you have to be very careful exactly what words you use. The, there was a breach of agreement um, by, you know, by, by AU and obviously Anoka, wasn't happy, um, and as, as 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 the people who are close to IOC, who understand the rules, you know, there's the feeling that the yeah. African Union has no business mm. hosting or owning games. And you know what? Um, I remember speaking to the Secretary General of Anok, and I was asking him, uh, "Do you understand what this could mean? Because AU is literally government." Right. So what happens then if they get to feel like you're just having games to rival their games? And in the argument, they say, you know what, the African Union can continue having its games. We're not saying they should stop having the games. The games are good. But let the games be a festival, you know, let mm. the games be a festival, but not an Olympic qualifier. qualifier. So they don't mm. need to follow any technical rules. You know, let's get together. Let's do dance competition. Let's beat the drum. You know, who can shout the loudest? <laughs> you know, I mean, like without them having to be Olympic sports. Okay. And I'm tempted to think that makes sense. I, I, as much I, as I'm not supposed to give my I, opinion. I, I, but I sort of think that makes sense. Let's not have their games as Olympic qualifiers. Let Africa Union have its get their own games game. as well. Yeah. If you ask me, yeah, and if you ask the gentleman here, I think uh, the more the games that we have, the merrier for Africa. And I think all of us can only uh, benefit from that. But thank you so much for joining us all the way from Nairobi, Lynn. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. And hopefully, uh, when the games do conclude, we'll have you back to talk about how Team Kenya uh, also performed. But thank you so much for your time, Lynn Wachira. Thank you so much. Looking forward to coming back again. Okay. Well, guys, uh, I think Lena spoke extensively about the future of the African Games. I think it, it would only, I know she was being mischievous, talking about, you know, having a computer about who can sing and dance the best, you know, all for the sake of African unity, yay. Mm. But if we have more competition, that must probably be the biggest problem of African sports. We don't have enough competition. So if Anoka is bringing a fresh one, hey, I think it can only serve Africa better. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to have competitions, a lot of it. But where are the funds? Where's the funds going to come from? Because, see, the continent also is dealing with a lot of economical issues. Mm. Um, Nigeria, here we have our own uh, uh, national, na national festival. Uh, national sports Sometimes festival. Sometimes I suffered a couple of postponements. Yeah. I think the next one is going to be held in Ogun State yes, later this, this year. year. Um, so I, I agree with the fact that the All African Games might have lost a it's bit of. Lost your, yeah, mm. and, and like she mentioned, they've had multiple chances to, to, to re evolve. And they haven't evolved mm. because he, you can't keep doing the same thing year on year on every four four years and expect. Yeah. Yeah. You need to be able to change the face, you know, alter a bit of things, give it a different spice, mm. and they have not been able to do that. So okay. Okay. Um, I, I'm not surprised that Anok has come and say hey, we're probably going to come out and bring something different. Okay, final this part. So, would you like to see break dance after? Oh, <laughs> it's going to be an official game. Dance coming in into the Olympics. Why as not? Olympic sport, Why so, not? Yeah. If you want more sports, let's bring it in. I don't mind. Definitely, I could compete in it. You might never know. <laughs> <laughs> You're still watching Game of We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be talking much more on the show. There's still plenty of football qualifiers, uh, go matches going on in football. Uh, there's Europa League going on, the Europa Conference League going on. And also, we'll be taking a good look at that uh, fight coming up tom uh, tomorrow in Saudi Arabia between Anthony Joshua and Francis Gano. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back.
Thank you so much for staying tuned. You're still watching Game On right here on News Central Television. I still got the guys here with me, Okwe Adebari and Wale Adikun. Let's move on very quickly and talk some football. As it stands now, we hear that uh, former Super Eagles goalkeeper Vincent Iyama has also thrown his hat into the ring, asking that he would very much like to be part of the new Super Eagles setup. Don't forget that Vincent Iyama is one of uh, Nigeria's most uh, capped players, over 100 caps. At one point in his career, was rated as Africa's finest goalkeeper goalkeeper and uh, he's been retired since 2015 but he said he would like to come back to the Super Eagles in a different capacity as a goalkeeper trainer. Okwe, this seems like manna from heaven if you ask me. <laughs> you have Af one of Africa's best goalkeepers, plenty of experience on the African continent, plenty of experience in the European uh, European football and he says he would love to be a go goalkeeper trainer. When you look at the likes of the, the Maduka Okoye, Stanley Wabani, there's so much that they can learn from him. Definitely, no doubt. Um, just like you said, I think to be precise, 101 appearances for the Super Eagles. Um, that's someone who, has, who also went through our grassroots level and then he went on to play football internationally, play for Lille Metropole. I think that's where he's had his longest stint in terms of um, yeah, European football. That, uh, yeah, uh, he, uh, Maccabi uh, Tel Aviv yeah, as well. Uh, yeah. And then one goalkeeper who has also scored a couple of goals in his career. True. And I know he was a set-piece specialist when it came to penalties as well. True. And then for the first time since he retired, in my own opinion, I think we saw a bit of a reincarnation with Stanley Wabali in mm. terms of a vocal <laughs> goalkeeper, in terms of someone who can organize his back line. And honestly, we're really Stanley not... Stanley Wabali, can, he, he can't seem to do any wrong in, in your oh, eyes. No, not honestly for me, because... He can almost walk on water as far as you're uh, concerned. I mean, maybe. Side even one yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> no, because if you think about it, after Inyama left, the type of goalkeepers that we've had, we've not really had them being commanding. We've had them being found wanting. And sometimes Nigerian football fans almost want to blame these goalkeepers for us not qualifying for certain tournaments. Oh, so, definitely yeah, so definitely. Me. So, I mean, it seemed like Stanley Wabali emerged from the shadows and then he seemed like, a, a, should I say, a fresh breath for us. And then having someone like Iyaman come back into the fold, just like you mentioned, Madika Okoye would learn a lot from him in terms of character. Francis Uzoho will learn a lot from him, from him in terms of, should I say, being more sharp when it comes to your reflexes and making better decisions. Mm. Honestly, Ayama would add a lot to, um, should I say, the goalkeeping staff and the coaching staff. And then again, on a final note, it seems like there is a, should I say, a clear line in when it comes to um, the former Super Eagles players coming to join the coaching staff. First of all, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, we've heard that Amonike is very much interested mm. in it. Currently, we have Finidi George, mm -hmm. you know, within the fold, and then Ayama is coming out. I mean, it's good when we have the right players coming back to give relevant experience to the current players to make them better. Wally, uh, Vincent Ayama and uh, Emmanuel Amunike, uh, I beg your pardon. It sounds like a dream team. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I've, I've learned my lessons over time that great footballers don't become great coaches. Mm. And uh, the, the big question hanging in there is, is there a vacant position for Vincent Ayama? We have a goalkeeper trade. Well, well. So is there a position right now? Yeah. There's well, not. I mean, because the NFF haven't said that because Peser is gone, the back, gone, entire yeah, backroom stuff yeah, is gone. True. So is there a vacant position? And we also have to ask the question: Is Vincent Hamer even qualified? Is he certified? Mm. Mm. I mean, in that interview, also admitted that he doesn't have any badges yet. Mm. True. But maybe we could do what Zizu. Real Madrid with Zizou when he didn't have his certificates, but they still kept him on. But he was working on it. Hold on, Wally. If I do recall, a certain Joseph Yobo didn't have any coaching badges, but yeah. he was part of the Super well, Eagles coaching. Where, where is he right now? Time. Where is he right now? He's, he's been faced out. Mm. You know, but this, I like the idea of Vincent Ayama coming into the fold, but I need to know that this guy is coming correct. I need to know that he's coming with a position open for him. I think right now the goalkeeper trainer is... Um, is it Keshoromo? Or, 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 yeah, last time yeah, I checked. Yeah. Yeah, last time I checked. So... There has to be a vacant position because you can't come in and we know how it works in Nigerian football, but the idea is tantalizing. Having Amunike, Finidi, Vincent Tiyama, but once again, great players don't make great managers. We have to be very, very careful. Oh, are mm. coaching certificates overrated? I mean, we're talking ah, about this oh, by Yama. I'm just asking. I'm really? Asking. I'm no, just asking. No, no, 100 caps for Nigeria, played at the highest level on the African continent and mm. in Europe as well. I mean, hey, you he's know what? the man who brings something to the table. Did you see Diego Maradona in Argentina? <laughs> True. The World Cup in 2006? But, but I mean, I, 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 don't think, I don't think that applies to every great player. Mm. Carlo Ancelotti was a great player. Right now, he's a great coach. Mm -hmm. um, who else? Maybe he's the one name that stands out to me currently. But then going back to Yama, 
on his social media page, I do see him training certain goalkeepers. Yes, yes he doesn't have a certification. And then I then go back to Rem, who have a certain English man in the coach of Willie. I've forgotten we'll his... Still, we'll still exactly. Still. I've forgotten his surname now. And then they took him on as a coach. He was doing very well for him. They were taking on fines while he was getting his coaching badges. We could maybe do the same if it's really important. Mm. Well, uh, let's uh, move away from one uh, great player to, uh, to another great player. Now, he was a great player in his day and his, his time, but he's always also turning out to be a really, really good coach right now because his team are currently 10 points clear at the top of the Bundesliga. And if you can beat Bayern to the Bundesliga title, you are definitely doing something right. The last person to do that was Jurgen Klopp, and we know how it turned out for him. We talk about Chabi Alonso, who is current coach of Bayer Leverkusen. Now, he's been speaking, uh, talking about a Nigerian striker, Victor Boniface, who was injured sadly before the start of the Africa Cup of Nations but he has given everyone some kind of good news that Victor Boniface is on his way back from injury and most likely will be back in action at the end of March. And consider that Nigeria has World Cup qualifiers to play in June. This is timely good news from, as far as I'm concerned, Wally. Yeah, it's good news. Um, very unfortunate he didn't make AFCON, although it was part of the uh, pre-tournament um, camp. I think got injured in camp. And um, good enough for Bar Leverkusen, his injury hasn't affected them. Um, they've also tried to bring in Bore Ma Bo Borja Mayora. And there's also Patrick Sheik also. Mm. And then just early to this evening, they preserved the unbeaten run. They were 2-0 down to yeah. Karabag and yeah. um, they found a way to, to Nathan Teller also has been contributing, I must also say. So I think it, it returning for them is just for them to consolidate on the league. I think the title is done with. I think they're champions elect. I know it's Bayern, but mm. if you're 10 points with um, about 11, 10 games to play, you're good as champions elect. So his return is timely for them, but crucially for us as well, you know, mm. uh, because, see, I think it's very important that we know that we're going, we, we must qualify for that World oh, yeah. Cup. Oh, very, yeah. very crucial. And we need all hands on deck. Yeah, okay. In your opinion, how much did Nigeria miss Victor bon Boniface? Because, in fact, he's never really played for Nigeria before, but you get the impression that if he was at the Nations Cup, he might have taken some of that striking burden off of Victor Simeon. Definitely, no doubt, in my own opinion. I think if he was fit, I think he would have been a starter. And I actually think that Jose Pesero would have actually reverted to a 4 4 2 because that's what he used throughout the qualifying com campaign. And Think about it, Boniface was in very, very good form. Double figures in goals and assists already this mm. season, 13 if I'm not mistaken. And then he has been, is a brilliant person. We know that for sure. Good personality to have in the camp as well. He would have made a difference for us, no doubt. Yeah, we're hearing like, a lot of talk uh, out of Europe as well that he might be in line to even replace uh, Victor Osimhen at Napoli if he goes at the end of the season. And also talk that maybe even Chelsea, if they don't get uh, Victor Osimhen, might get uh, Victor Boniface. Well, one Victor goes... Another victor comes. Uh, still talking about Nigerian football. Let's tell you that matches are currently going. A match is currently going on in the Africa Games men's football event. Nigeria are currently facing Uganda. It's goalless now. It's still the first half. But earlier today, Senegal defeated South Sudan one 0 uh, and are currently uh, doing pretty well in that group as it currently stands. Uh, let's uh, get back to that uh, major fight that we are talking about. Uh, Earlier in the show, it's Francis Ngannou versus Anthony Joshua. Uh, Weigh-ins were had there today. Uh, Francis Ngannou weighed nine kilograms more than Anthony Joshua. Definitely looks, I mean, that's two superb specimen, uh, two superb boxing specimens there. But guys, I really have to ask this question. This is boxing, not MMA. You get the impression <laughs> that Anthony Joshua should have the advantage in this. Or is it that I'm, I'm looking at it too simplistically? Otto Wallen said it, you know, before this, um, I heard of the fight tomorrow. He said, we are letting this get to the head of Francis Ngannou and the mm. MMA community, you know. Um, styles make fights. Mm. Every fight is different. And he feels Joshua is going to have it easy. And I agree with him. Last time I was here, I said three, three round knockout. Uh, because, see, I like the fact that Ngannou acquitted himself um, against Tyson Fury. And maybe that might have gotten into his head. And um, you're looking at the Joshua is focused. You're looking at Joshua was won his last three fights in some convincing fashion. I think he will do the job. But credit to Ngannou. Um, I was watching Build Up and a couple of French Cameroonians travel to Saudi Arabia mm. to cheer on. So the atmosphere is a bit uh, boisterous. The Nigerians in Saudi Arabia, <laughs> don't, don't worry. They will cheer the, 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 the atmosphere is a bit... And that's why I said that pre-fight has been very civil. And I don't know, as a boxing fan, I don't know how I feel about that. Mm. I think there should be some trash talking. But Joshua is not more known for trash talking, mm. right? Mm. And uh, Ngannou also is the cool, calm, collected guy. So it just, it just feels somehow that um, what looks like a big fight has been 
tempered down by the way these guys have been gentlemanly about it. Ah, uh, let's talk to the gentleman <laughs> sitting to your right there. The gentleman, I get the impression that this is just the calm before the storm. That when that ring, when that bell goes, it's going to be nothing but pure violence. Mm -hmm. You're looking at two heavy hitters, two knockout specialists, two men who are definitely going for it. I get the impression that someone is going to hit the canvas in this fight. Definitely. First of all, Wally did say that Ngannou has so much confidence because of how he performed against Fury, so the confidence is there. Training with someone like Mike Tyson, definitely he has learned one or two things. But then again, I, I take a look at Anthony Joshua. After the Ruiz bout, the back-to-back, -back, first of all, the defeat and coming back, he seemed to be different in my own opinion, mm. uh, dropped a couple of kilos, seemed more focused and less... Um, he, took a, he took out the tactics for me. I think he was a bit too tactical in my own opinion going into the, the, the Ruiz bout. But then again, Joshua against brawlers. He doesn't really have a good record against brawlers. Mm. I think that's why he suffered that tiny defeat against Andres, but going into this but bout... That's a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, it's, it's a long time okay, ago, it's but... A it's a long time, time ago, but... they had three straight wins. Yeah, true, but I'm not going to forget history going into this bout. Yes, it is an exhibition game, but then, in my own opinion, since... It's not an exhibition fight, Wally. Yeah, it's just, just a non-title I mean, fight. I mean, and it's not spending money on life. I mean, but I wanted, I want, uh, uh, Francis and Gadda actually ranked 10th ten, by the wow. WBC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, that's, and that's why Joshua should be wary. But I wanted to ask you, I mean, you're the boxing official out there, that, I mean, how much... Well, as the impact of Ben Davison and um, Lee Wiley mm. joining Joshua, has that really been the game changer for him? Yeah, I think I think it has. I think it has. Uh, I mean, he looked really sharp against uh, Otto Valin, finished him in five rounds. Mm -hmm. He looked uh, phenomenal against uh, Robert Hellenius as well, sparked him out right out as well. But I get the impression that he has to win this fight by knockout because if you look, if you were at the press conference, you watched the press conference yesterday, he was basically trash talking Tyson Fury. Oh, yeah. And he could, yeah. he could do that because Fury did not. Beat him convincingly. But Everybody yeah, agree, still agree. believes True. that you know he. Yeah, one of the judges, I think, yeah. the it was just two out of three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but, but then, on the final one mm. question, do you think Anthony Joshua is the man to give a knockout to Francis Ngannou? Yeah, but we'll find out about <laughs> that tomorrow. We'll be talking to our band Nabi Hollywood Warrior. He'll be joining us again for a pre-fight preview of that game. Quick updates from Accra. Believe it or not, Nigeria are down one nil to Uganda. Uh, the Ugandans are leading in that particular game right now. So it's not looking good for the... Uh, just, just so we are clear, this is the national under-20 team of Nigeria that is participating uh, at these particular uh, games. We beat them at the under-20 Afcon in Egypt. Yeah, we get that uh, so before. This no might, this That's what we say. Yeah, so uh, we're still talking about back, back to boxing now. Well, there's a, another interesting fight coming up this year as well. It's Jake Paul, YouTuber turned boxer, Facing the legend himself, the man, the myth, the monster, Iron Mike Tyson in an exhibition fight. And that fight is coming around in July. I don't know what this man is thinking, but uh, Jake Paul is 27 years old. And uh, by the time this fight comes around, Iron Mike Tyson will be 58. But you get the impression that 58, 22, 75, he is no less dangerous. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's why this, this is the one that's going to be bloody for me. Uh, because I've seen clips of Tyson in training, mm. even mm. at 57, mm. he still got it. The speed, um, the punch. The tenacity, yeah, the sheer viciousness. Yeah. And, and trust me, um, I don't care about the 30-year age difference. I think Tyson um, is going to take this one. But credit to Jack Paul. Uh, whose debut in pro boxing was on the undercard of Tyson yeah. when he fought Roy Jones Jr. Junior, yeah. um, a couple of years back. So this is like full circle mm. moments. You know, for both fighters, but okay. um, I, I, this is going to be interesting. Mm, okay. is, is, uh, is, <laughs> is it a case of uh, <laughs> young boy versus grandpa? No, not mm. at all. Because mm. taking a look at Mike Tyson, I think he's still the beast. I think he's still got the beast in him. Taking a look at his his training videos, look, I'm terrified. And for the first time, I'm going to be happy to see someone knock out Jake Paul. I mean. Coming from being a YouTuber, he's got a lot of confidence because he, I mean, he's he's nine is nine to one in mm. my own opinion. It's not rather on paper, it's nine to one, but I he's going to get people yeah. He's not true, true, knows, true. But so for the first time, he's going to actually face an actual astute boxer, a fifty-eight year old boxer who's been retired for how many years? Well, Mike Tyson. Tyson. Paul checked out Mike Tyson's knockout record. 50 wins, 44 yeah. by knockout. Ooh, mm. Ooh. it's mm. not for the faint yeah. of hearts. <laughs> it's not for the faint This of guy hearts. was world champion but, at 20. Yeah, but let's quickly give you, let's quickly give you an update coming up from Accra. Now it is now 1-1. The uh, Flying Eagles of Niger have equalized. So it's uh, pretty, it's, it's still in the balance right now. We don't know who will take that particular game. So it's uh, Nigeria 1, Uganda 1 in that uh, men's football event at the Africa 
uh, at the Africa Games going on in Accra. Let's move on quickly and give you uh, results from the UEFA Europa League. Uh, matches were played early today. Some of them have been concluded. Some of them are about to start. Some of them are actually started right now. Karabaga and uh, Bayer Leverkusen. That game actually ended 2-2. 2 2. So there's a, there's a small error there. Actually, ended 2 2 uh, by Leverkusen coming from two goals down uh, to draw that game. Roma, AS Roma, actually flattened Brighton by four goals to nothing. So uh, that's another error that uh, you should please uh, uh, just discuss that as, that as well. Sparta Prague uh, losing four goals to one at home to Liverpool. Uh, Darwin Nunes scoring a brace in that game. These the other matches are currently going on AC Milan versus Slavia Prague. It's goalless. Benfica losing at home to Rangers of Glasgow. Freiburg and West Ham United is currently goalless as well. Our Olympic Marseille are leading Villarreal by two goals to nothing. To the Europa Conference League now. Matches were also played early on today. Matches are also currently going on. Let's quickly give you those results now. Ajax and Aston Villa played out a goalless draw. Molder of Norway uh, defeated Club Bruges. 1-0 Olympic... Uh, I, I, sorry, that game ended 1-1. I beg your pardon. 1-1. Olympia, of course, losing at home to uh, Maccabi Tel Aviv. 4-1 that game actually finished. Uh, and while Sturm Graz lost at home to Lille of France by three goals to nothing, currently going on Dynamo Zagreb and Pauk Salonika. Of course, you know Pauk employed uh, the best player at the Africa Cup of Nations, last Africa Cup of Nations, top manager, captain, uh, vice captain, William Tusekong, who's out injured. Uh, so he's not in this game. Maccabi Haifa also leading Fiorentina by two goals to one. Uh, Servette uh, also uh, played out a goalless draw with Victoria Pilton, while Union saint gilles of Belgium are losing by a lone goal at home to Fenerbahce. Uh, to some sad news now coming out of football, Christopher Olsen, Swedish midfielder, currently in hospital since February the 20th. Uh, well, his club have released statement that's FC Michelin of Denmark that he's suffering from several small clots on the brain. Now, this is a unique situation because it rarely happens, but unfortunately, the 25-year-old midfielder who's had over 40 caps for Sweden, uh, he's been uh, in this situation. He's currently in an induced coma, uh, but hopefully his club is hoping that he will uh, move out of this sad situation. We're all, he's all in our thoughts and prayers because you never right, like to see this. These are the kind of things that medical uh, examinations cannot pick up on, okay? Definitely, and it's quite sad to see this. Um, in recent years, we've had other issues with players having... Um, heart failure on the pitch as well and mm, then with cardiac arrest cardiac arrest bringing in the defibrators as well but then this is now something different and it's really not nice hopefully he does heal in due time and we get to see him back on the field yeah our thoughts and prayers are with uh, christian olsen swedish midfielder for fc michelin and uh, still talking footballers now we hear that jude bellingham jude bellingham english uh, mid international midfielder will avoid punishment from the spanish fa after uh, allegedly uh, using a slur against our uh, English, <laughs> English uh, mid teammate, Mason Greenwood. Now, uh, the Spanish FA could not find reasonable doubt. Oh, well, uh, could not find, do I say, concrete uh, evidence and could not punish, uh, Jake, uh, I beg your pardon, uh, Jude Bellingham after that particular incident. So he's free, but he's still serving a too-much uh, ban uh, for, do I say, uh, confronting the referee after the last game. So that is one... Uh, in that, well, that's another miss for, for Jude Bellingham. Uh, he will not be punished by the Spanish FA uh, for using an alleged slur against uh, his English uh, teammate, uh, Mason Greenwood. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us on the show. It's been fun. It's been entertaining. Thank you so much, Ope. Always a pleasure having you here. Thank you for having and me. And thank you again, Wale. Yes, good to be here. And mm. um, can't wait to be back tomorrow. Fight night. Fight night. Can't wait for that one. And thank you to everyone behind the scenes uh, who made this show possible. But before we go, uh, did you remember that particular incident way back in 1999 between Arsenal and Sheffield United, where Sheffield United actually, Arsenal were drawn at home against Sheffield United in the fifth round of the FA Cup, uh, beat them 2-1 thanks to goals from Patrick Vieira and Mark Overmars, but the winning goal actually caused plenty of controversy. The ball had been kicked into touch by United players, so uh, everyone expected so that uh, they, one of their teammates could receive treatment, but when the ball was thrown in, in again, Kanu received possession. And he broke away down the right and squared for Mark Overmars to score. And of course, uh, Sheffield were absolutely outraged about that one, pointing fingers at Kanu. Uh, but unfortunately, honestly, he misunderstood the situation. And Arsene Wenger, in his typical French uh, gentleman demeanor, he stepped in and recognized the unique situation and uh, offered for that uh, they should, a replay yeah. should be held. He asked Steve Bruce, manager of Sheffield United, that he was more than happy to offer them a replay. And, uh, and it was accepted. And the FA 
also agreed as well. So and the rematch took place 10 days later. Dennis, uh, Mark Overmars and Dennis uh, Beckham are also putting them through once again for a 2-1 win. So uh, all's well that ends well. And it's all thanks to French gentlemen. Can you, can you believe, can you believe that? <laughs> Thank you once again for joining us on the show. Game on returns tomorrow. My name is Baba Sidi On behalf of the great guys here, have a wonderful evening. We'll see you tomorrow.